Hello everyone. I'd like to revisit or have a look at the Revit Live Sync for Lumion. And something that I've discovered recently is that one can have multiple models that are live synced into a Lumion scene. And also you can have repeated models of the same design appearing and updating um, at the same time within Lumion. And then over and above that I'd like to discuss also the great um, advice and help that is available on the Lumion website. Uh, recently it has inspired me and helped me to re-establish a link with the model which I didn't know would be possible. So I'd like to take you through those steps. I will not be demonstrating how to reconnect the link but I will show you the process and you can see that I would definitely start using Revit Live Link um, on a recent project that I worked on, I found it so useful just to to see what the model is going to render like as you are designing in Revit. There's so many things to take into account, materials, you, you pick so much more up within the Lumion environment that you wouldn't within Revit. And it's definitely worth your while if you have invested in Lumion to use this Revit Live Sync ability. Um, it's a great design tool and um, really really worth your while so diving into this what I've got open on my screen here is Revit you can see the Lumion add-in uh, you can always get to it from your shopping trolley if you go to the Autodesk App Store you'll find that the Lumion plugin is available there uh, really simple to find it as well download if you've got the uh, Revit license it's free to download you don't have to pay for it and that then uh, sits within your Revit application and that allows you to not only live sync but also export to a Collada format, a .dae file which you can also bring into Revit as a standalone model which isn't uh, part of the live sync. So I've got one little model open over here unfortunately I can't show you the project that I'm working on but this is representative of something like that it's just a little sample model within Revit but and then in addition to that I've also got open a cloud model so it also works from the uh, Collaborate Pro the modern version of or the new version of um, BIM 360 design pretty much works the same way and uh, over here we've got the Kobe sample model that Autodesk releases with its BIM operability tools it's just a nice little model to teach people how to work with Kobe. So for our purposes, it's two separate models. And we're going to live sync these into Lumion. But to make things simple, I've just got a flat open file over here. It's very simple. And there's the origin. And we, we're going to bring one of these files in. So here's my sample house. And it's as simple as pressing on play. So once you press play, it will now live sync with Lumion. And when you give Lumion the focus again, it appears there in your screen. Now, you're not limited to where it appears. You can move this model around as usual. So if you pick it, you can move it left and right, up and down. Just move it out of the way. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use the Alt Move command to create a copy of that model. So imagine you're building some other housing estate where you've got the same design repeating itself. And then let's see what this operates like when we change something within the design. Okay, so there's three versions of the same house. Of course, the topography would look different, but the idea stays the same. I go back to Lumion. I'm going to hide the roof. And let's have a look how that updates within Lumion. 
all three of the designs now have their roofs removed. So whatever changes you apply in one of these models is, is applied to all of them. And that makes it very easy if you have repeated designs on a housing estate and you would like to update them automatically. So you can do that either through hiding elements or you can also do so from um, just you know, switching on and off categories. That would be another way to do that. So if you put the roof back then it will show up again. So you can also get through these through the categories if you want to do that wholesale through visibility graphics overrides and switch off the roof from this place over there it will achieve the same purpose. But the idea of course would be in reverse that if you're busy designing then everything that you are doing within your model will be reflected on every instance of that model within the Lumion scene. Now if you had a second design that you were working on, so let's suppose that you had uh, another house design, if you use your imagination, we stopped sinking over here, we're going back to the Kobe model and now we're going to run sink over there. And we run sync. As soon as it's ready we'll give Lumion the focus again and upon Lumion receiving the focus we'll see that a second model appears. This one's a little bit heavier so it's going to take a bit of time just to get into Lumion. We can see that it's going at 36, 40, 50 percent. It's almost there. And once that link is established then whatever changes we affect within this model will be updated in the other model, in the instances of the model within Lumion rather. Okay, so it's just getting ready. Your computer does um, use a bit more resources when you're when you're running Lumion and uh, Revit at the same time. These are lightweight models, so it's not too heavy on this machine. But if they were large projects, you you might want to invest in a good uh, rendering machine in a good um, gaming sort of desktop, and that will be good. All right, so there you can see how the Kobe model came in uh, relative to the origin and we can do exactly the same over here we can move this model around copy this model but we can also switch the models out with the other model so these one two three of these Kobe models And if we were to choose one of them and look at the extended properties for Lumion and maybe replace the selection from within the library with the synced file, I think it might be 2.01. I'm hoping that's the right one, 2.01. Let's just see what this one is called. That's 2.01, that's correct. So we'll replace this one with 2.01. You can see how they switch out. So if you have different designs, you are most welcome to switch them out like this. And uh, whichever one you choose, they're still going to update. So now we've got four of this design. If we accept that and go back to Lumion, stop the sync again, and go back to the previous model, and start syncing. Okay, so the live sync is on and what we're going to do now is just use our visibility graphics overrides to switch off the roof category completely. And you'll see that update happen within Revit, uh, within Lumion. And there you can see now all four of the house designs are behaving similarly. So you can have multiple designs and multiple instances of designs within Lumion syncing with the 
Revit model. Now sometimes, I'm going to close Lumion now, but sometimes you might have a real problem because you, lose, you lost the connection to the file. And that might be for various reasons. Uh, you might have deleted the Revit file, or you might have deleted the, the, the model on the cloud or renamed it. So in instances like that, I would refer you to the Lumion importation guidelines for files. It doesn't only deal with Revit, but uh, also Revit LT and the DWG export. And specifically towards the end, you'll see that they handle quite a few cases. But one of them is, what do you do uh, when... What do you do... When you update a model in Live Sync, when the name, when the file name or the folder location of the Revit file has changed, then opening that, you'll see that there's some guidelines on how to do that. So in in my case, it was actually the Kobe model equivalent, and I had to dive into the local file that is created by Revit from the cloud, and just to give you a further pointer on that, if you if you don't know about this yet, Revit Cloud worksheet models also have uh, local copies of those worksheet files, but they're stored in a very special place. And in addition to that, they use a global unique ID as an identifier as opposed to the file names. You might just have to look for it a bit. But following this method, I did actually get the file to sync again. So even if you're working on the cloud and you lose that connectivity with your model, you can still re-establish that connection afterwards. I was quite surprised that it worked, but it did work. So this Lumion Live Sync has come um, a long way since we started with it. I think during the design phase, it's much better to use the Live Sync. And then only later on, you'll see that when you export, you can, you can up the quality of the model that you're exporting to get closer to a sort of a finished product but during the live sync it is uh, it is very very useful just from a from making sure that your model and Lumion are compatible with each other in the sense that the materials are are correct and the families are modeled correctly and all of the considerations that you might have with how your model is going to look within Lumion um, yeah, so I would say from when I first used the Live Sync for Lumion, it's come a long way and uh, it's definitely worth your while looking into it. Having worked on a real world project now using Live Sync, I'm sold on it and I wish that all of you that also have Lumion would at least give it a try and see uh, how nicely it works during a design. Well, that's it from me for this. Uh, uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you can use this capability within Revit and Lumion and let us know if we can be of assistance with any, with any of these uh, items that were mentioned during this video. Until next time, enjoy Lumion!